Hello, my name is Ajay Rai and you're watching The Defining Moment for Creating the Culture of Conscience. Today we're delighted to have Asif Hanif on the show. Asif was born in Pakistan in Lahore back in 1970 and came to the UK in 1998. He's been a human rights activist, especially in the area of disability and also a peace campaigner. He was the founder of an NGO called VOSP, Voices of Special Persons, and is also a freelance journalist. On top of all that, he's also an ambassador for peace. Asif, thank you so much for joining us on The Defining Moment. Thank you very much, Ajay, uh, and thank you very much for Defining Moments, for inviting me for this opportunity. Well, the, the topic we'd like to look at today, obviously, together with yourself, is being Muslim in the UK. And that's a topic, obviously, you are Muslim and you're living in the UK. And we really want to find out about what that actually entails and, and the experiences you've had. However, before we get into that, can you please share with us a defining moment from your life? Uh, yes, of course. My defining moment in my life, I'm thankful to the God that he has given me the conscious to stand and fight for the injustices in spite there is no support against these injustices. I came across this in 1989 and I struggled and still I have that spark. I have not gone and achieved what it requires to diminish the injustices but I think my defining moment, it is in my blood that I stand and campaign peacefully for all the injustices of the world and especially by becoming the ambassador for peace. Now that uh, uh, defining moment have grown global because now before I was as a Pakistani and injustices within the Pakistani society and the culture but now I am part of the greater good and the global community of ambassador for peace those who are coming from all sorts of background culture and religious and doing something better peacefully for the world. Okay. And was there a time in which you actually felt the calling to become an ambassador for peace or a calling to actually stand up, like, as you said earlier, for justice? I, I, during my struggle for the last, uh, I think, 20 years, I've seen lots of platforms, you know, they've been formed, initiated, advertised and publicized for the greater good. But the spirit and the people, that's those who are a part of it, was not there. It was just so-called, in inverted commas, formality forums. And where the people are, you know, whatever background they came from, they were just putting that, that they came from the best background. Why I made that decision to choose, uh, become part of the Ambassador of Peace family, there I have seen the people that they have the natural instinct in spite of the different faith, religions and culture backgrounds that they come naturally to relate, integrate and respect each other by following the different faiths. The human instinct in that I have found it and which is I think something different that I have experienced uh, during the last 10 and uh, 15 years. And that makes me, okay, yes, this is a platform where nobody is coming. There were Jews, there were Hindus, there were Sikhs, there were Muslims, and nobody is preaching their religion. All they are preaching, okay, we are human beings. We got to share, we got to understand, educate ourselves, and educate others as well. And what can we contribute towards the peace of this world, which is, in the name of the peace at a greater risk. That makes me to join this ambassador for peace. And one of the unique way of that it is, it has encouraged the real, you know, the spirit within the people and awarding them awards before commitment. You know, you have seen people have done different things and this and that at the end, we recognize them and there, their struggle stops. Okay, I've been knighted it. I've been given that award. So now whatever I do, I'll do for the commercial purpose and my own benefit. But that ambassador of peace was very different because it just uh, sees your passion and in, uh, integri integrity that you have to commit yourself positively and they give that award. I think that is the unique way. It was an award of commitment and encouraging the good and peaceful thoughts. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that.
Thank you. L let's get on to the topic today, being Muslim in the UK. First of all, what does being Muslim mean to you? I think that is a, a very personal and, you know, the faith and the values and the cultures and I think ab above all the faith and the religion that people, you know, choose to follow or to live with, it is their personal. And uh, in that way, if we call ourselves being religious, being a faith followers, then it is not something that we say. It is something that we practically execute in the society that how you treat people. But nowadays, unfortunately, this faith has been used in the wrong, has been used in the wrong contest, and the people are just putting themselves into the different, you know, blocks and trying to justifying and fighting for their existence, which is not the case. You know, you 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 can be from any belief, but you are human being. Above all, your humanity is most important, and. I think the bottom line of all the faiths and I think majority of it how to become a good human being. There is no two ways about it. There is only one way. We need God for our own self. You know, and we need God that how we become successful and peaceful within ourselves and God need us how we treat others. If we all forget about the differences and we all focus what good can we share, I think the world would be a better place. And no matter how small or big that passion is, just initiate it. And I think then there will be no question that whether your faith is important or whether your nationality is important because you are not taking it as a threat and the people are not taking it to segregate you. You know, that is that is not the case. What we have to do, that how the people naturally, uh, you know, commit themselves and live with other people. Like being me being a Muslim, if I would have to live, you know, according to what I believe, I would have chosen an Islamic country. But I live in West because I, I can see the real spirits of the faith Islam uh, practically being adopted and uh, being, uh, you know, treated here in Britain. You, you might find it and people might find it very different. You know, the, the, he, he, here, here comes a Muslim who is saying that Britain is an Islamic country. It is about the values, the respect towards humanity, dignity, uh, consideration and, you know, uh, and human potential. And th that is not the case because uh, the faith does not belong to any border, does not belong to any caste, does not belong to any, you know, geographical, you know, identity. People can be in different faiths from different parts of the world. And what we need to do, let's not justify our anti-social behavior as a religion to get escape of it. Let's take the responsibility and judge ourselves that what's right and what's wrong within ourselves and try to mend it. I just want to say, you know, when you point a finger, there is one finger to the others, but three fingers come back to you. It means I have to look to myself more rather than I judge others. So I think being Muslim and being British, I think I feel more comfortable. Okay. Well, you already mentioned now that you think Britain is, is an Islamic state or... Uh, practically. Practically. But before we put more of a spotlight on the UK, I would like to ask you uh, just your experience or, or what do you think uh, in the world, are there model examples of Islamic states or where you feel, again, in your opinion, that Islam in terms of its culture, its traditions, its laws is being successfully practiced? Uh, as I have said before, you know, the, the faith and religion are not limited to any borders. They are not limited to any particular community or any continent. They, 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 they belong to humans. And, you know, any ideal society on the basis of faith or religion, I think the, the real ideal society is that society which treats its inhabitants in spite of what they believe in. Because 
we are created by the creator and we live in different parts of the world but the human beings are created on the same principle god is kind to us all indiscriminately but what we need to have we humans stop playing god and being kind and considerate to other human beings like how the creator is kind to us i mean i understand what you're saying but uh, i guess the point i'm trying to make is that there is it seems a uh, an agenda to create an islamic state or create uh, nations like um, for example your experience in pakistan pakistan is a predominantly muslim country do you think islam is being practiced as it should be according to islamic tradition culture and the faith of course itself in, in a successful way so therefore it becomes a benchmark in other words for how being muslim should be practiced in the uk you see th th on the basis of the religion uh, the ideology or the integrity of sovereignties you see if we all become you know really in depth faith followers then there will be no confrontation then there will be no borders it does not mean that the borders are opposed to the uh, to the countries and sovereignties no then there will be no borders where the people feel and think themselves to be different they accepted it uh, you see on the basis of the religion within the two world wars the social and geographical and political situation of the europe is the same as now in middle east as now in southeast asia and they have they have tried to create a state or a boundary that what uh, a a people living in a in in a, in a certain part of the world they said okay we want to make it a benchmark but it never works it never works now you know in 21st century the globalization is going on internet is going on so the boundaries are diminishing what we need we need to understand we need to really understand i would like to say you know with the, with the reference of uh, this program like whatever you believe please believe by knowing it not believe by ignoring it and th there they, there will not be a in state or a model role model that we say oh that is the state that best suits that religion no we 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 would be creating walls in the world and uh, we will be again going back to uh, b back to the history where we will really fight as a uh, 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 as the fighters that is uh, uh, stopping people intruding their land because you know the faith and religion never says you know to kill or to hate and you know on the basis of the faith and religion if you know i have no problem i have really no problem by living in britain as a muslim because i know what islam is and i know by being a muslim what my responsibilities are in in all these countries who based on religious theology if they really know what it practically means then i think it will be more attracted by the others those who believe in different faiths i i i, I think within faith uh, uh, for me it is very difficult that it really requires a, a role model state you know to give an example that is in it's just state. it's just in the context of of what we're talking about being muslim in the uk i mean for example let's look at being christian being christian in the uk is very different to being christian let's say for example in the united states there's a mm -hmm. there's a very different spirit or a different e even way of worship you know, and, and you can very much see the contrast in the two and i would just like to kind of put forward the suggestion that being for example muslim in pakistan is different for example being muslim in iran or being muslim in indonesia where again there are very large faith communities that are practicing mm -hmm. islam so i mean just to set that up as a as a as a as a, a reference to what we're going to be talking about the fact that actually islam is practiced in very different ways depending on of course the nation itself in which it's actually uh the actual you know uh culture and and the the, tr the traditions are locally uh, having some kind of influence on the actual practice of the faith so if that's wearing for ex for example the hijab or the niqab you know maybe in in Saudi Arabia that's slightly different to maybe uh like in Indonesia i don't know and that's what i was trying to get at you see the being muslim in pakistan and being muslim in britain the difference between the two is 
in Pakistan, you know, you're born into it. You would never been welcomed and you would never been encouraged to ask questions. What is faith? What is a belief? What Islam says? What is this? How, how we, what does it mean that me being a Muslim and how we pray, how we treat and what is the difference between words and deeds? You are never been allowed that freedom to raise, to educate your, yourself with the questions that is arising in your mind after a certain age. Whereas in, in Britain, here, like if people from any faith and belief, they have that freedom to ask the question. They have that freedom to explore it. And by asking it and exploring it, you are not being misunderstood. You are not being discouraged. I think that is, that is you know, the, the real difference. There, you have no choice because you have been tagged up to it. Okay, that's it. You go to the mosque, the Malvi is going to say, what is going to say? You just bend your head, pray, come back. No question. But you know what about the real message of Islam? And I think it's a real message of all the faiths and belief. Read it, understand it, question it, and apply on yourself. The faith. So are you saying in Pakistan where the culture no, no, is the Islam, faith. you're not allowed to question it? There, yeah. You know, I, I had, you know, th there was a, uh, you know, a stage where, you know, we were sitting in the mosque and uh, there were mosques adjacent to each other, like you see in India and Pakistan, there are too many. We have, we have made too many God's houses, but we have not made the heavens for the, the, the God's creator, human beings. So there was a situation where there were mosques across the streets and the, the people those the preachers, he has raised an issue and he said he was creating a confrontation or something. And I said, it, you are sitting at that place, you know, in, in mosque or, and you are saying this to these people. Why can't it be a better way if you two, those who know the religion very well, discuss it and then find a harmonic way? And I was very mistreated there. And I really cried, you see. Uh, uh, I have I have said that in a state of creating confrontations or you know making the people uh, to you know arouse why can't we peacefully understand that and educate these peoples because in terms of the religion I, I I wanted to say that you know when it comes to explore about the religion we don't spend much time I'm not a bo I'm not a born freelance journalist. You're not, you're not a born journalist. People are not architecture doctors. You know, dress designers, fashion designers. What they have done it, they have made efforts. But when it comes to the faith and the religion, they believe. We don't spend time to know it, so we can be provoked by any X, Y, Z, and easily get into confrontation. So that was the difference, you know, where the people can freely. You know, that is why religion by birth is less important than religion by choice. You know, you, you know and understand it. And it is not about you have to baptize or convert people. It is about you. And why we need it? We need it for our own betterment, for our own internal peace. It is not about that Asif is going to say, Ajay, whatever you believe is wrong, you don't have to do. No. For my religious and faith issues are my personal, even more personal than I can say, you know, anything else that can be debated. So the people have to understand that. And if we really want to talk about, about the faiths, we have to talk about with the harmony and similarities. We don't have to give way because it can never be the case in the world that people will baptize into one. Because when the creator has not put a compulsion, you know, I have never been stamped over my forehead before my birth. Oh, he is a Muslim. And you have never been stamped that you are a Hindu. No, he had created us freely. Why we want to do it? Okay, well, following on from that <clears throat> concept of religion by birth or religion by choice, um, as a Muslim living in this country, and, and it's a provoking question for anyone who comes to another country where the, the mainstream culture, the mainstream faith is not their own. 
what do you think should be priority their nationality in other words being british or their religion so rather than being a christian a jew a muslim a hindu they are a british muslim a british christian a british hindu and so on what do you think the priority should be you see name me any country named me any country in this world their nationals are christian only their nationals are muslim only their nationals are jewish only their nationals are sikh only there is there is no such thing there is no such thing they states and in that state even the concept that has been given by the democracy in the 21st century it it gives the people the freedom of their faith and belief so whatever faith you believe it has it has never been the business of a state and authority to tell you this is what you believe this is you don't believe but what about for the individual themselves should they identify themselves as okay. first of all being british and then muslim or muslim and then british the individuals has to understand that when their belief is not in question then why they put this in question you know it's it's very fair all those who came and live here who came to britain let's be very clear and precise if you made your choice then your religion and faith says if you do study where you live respect it no matter it follows what you believe or it does not follow what you don't believe so respect it 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 has never been the case that you it is an example because our intellectuals and philosophers have failed to come down to the level which the general masses understand if i'm going to talk intellectually among the people whose intellectual level i'm not appealing then whatever i'm going to say is going above their head we got to speak in that way that the people understand it and in terms of the religion and faith i i must say that why it takes the people away from the religion because they talk in a very you know in a in a very isolated language and when you think oh muslim no i can't be muslim in this but in this life it is chosen by the by the angels no it's not that it's about the conscious and care it's about you treating others you it's not that you become a hindu muslim sikh and uh, any religion and you don't have to laugh you don't have to do the live and you can't do. they are portraying it religion in a in a very rigid way that these the new generation think oh god i cannot be serious for all time so if i cannot be serious i can no it's not it's a natural way whatever you believe it how you treat others that counts and which i think uh, the people now they have to stop you know they be being muslim being british you came here whatever religion you belong to whatever your forefathers follow there is no question about that nationality so why do we need to feel that we are different when we came with our choice if somebody comes to your house you invited someone you wanted them to know to, to to treat them how you want it you 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 don't want and expect anybody coming to your house and say i could change it i don't like it oh that curtain is not good the way you live is not good you don't like them when you come the only way that makes the people or that makes you to like the people is the way they respecting the way you are so when people interact with them in a in a very respectable and understanding way I think how many people how many friends have you made on the basis of religion I have never made any friends on the basis of the religion and even uh, the beauty about living in London even I talk to the Jewish I talk to those who don't believe but when the way we talk start conversation the difference of religion and the question it never comes we become friends so what is important important is the behavior important how you treat it important is not what you are what you are is for you but how you treat others then you make people your friends and then they listen to you so in other words you're saying we should be accepting so no matter what faith we are if we go and live in another person's country where things are different the culture is different we should be accepting of what we find there rather than trying to change it but with that in mind 
What do you think are anyway the challenges that a Muslim faces being in the UK, especially from a cultural perspective? It, I think it's, it's, it's a two-way. It's a two-way procedure. Those who came to this country, they should have to respect that here, how the way is. And, or, and those who are living here, they should have also to uh, uh, include them and not much focusing about they are different. It is, you know, I wanted to give an example. You know, there, there was a soldier who was Pakistani. He came six years ago. He joined the, the Royal Army. He went to Afghanistan and he laid his life. He laid his life. The people are that much committed, you know, being British and being Muslim and I have and being Pakistani. I have not seen that much coverage. OK, look, that integrity. People are living very sincerely. People are really adopting the British ways and only a minor amount of the people who are rigid and living in their ghettos. That should not be our priority to give an, uh, attention to them. Our priority should be those who are who are getting along with the society. You know, once if you made your choice to come and live, you accept the society is it. And the second, the the the, the parenting society that you are coming into it, they have to also accept you. And you know, we we should never be giving justification of our integrity and of our sincerity. It is a two way, and I think. Now in Britain, you know, the apparent society, the, the British societies, they have shown the tolerance. Now it is about the tolerance of other people who have migrated to Britain. Not only in Britain, wherever migration is taking place, you know, the people have to consider these things and, you know, try to create and bridge and harmony by, 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 by living together because being different it does not mean that you cannot live together. Our, our one of the most important and influencing aspect that makes us bring together, we are all human. And our expressions and feelings and emotions are all the same. So acceptance in a two way that people, those who have decided, they don't have to treat in, in a way that they pick and choose. Okay, that is what it benefits me. I pick it. Oh, that is what. Uh, I don't like it, I don't belong to here, no. It should not be like this. It should be as a whole package. You adopt it and when that gives you identity, that gives you a right and access to the world, so you also fulfill the responsibility. It, is, it does not mean that we put our legs into boats. You know, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't want to interfere in, in Pakistani politics while I'm here in Britain. My most important, uh, uh, you know, uh, the focus is I'm here. Now I'm here. How can I do something better here? Because if I would create that better bridge, then it would not, it would also be able to create a communication and understanding between Pakistan and Britain. You know, like people has to, does not have to find escape and, you know, uh, you know, things like, no, I, uh, I made a choice because I want this. And I don't want this. So uh, you relate and integrate, and also the, the parent society, uh, 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 the society that you live in, they have to also don't undermine your integrity that it can be questioned. Asif Hanif, I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming. Thank on you the very show. much. Thanks. Okay. You've been watching the defining moment for creating the culture of conscience. If you'd like to find out more, we're on the web at www.definingmoment.eu. Thank you for watching and we wish you all the best.